Before we start today's podcast, close your eyes. You walk up to your cabin. What does it look like on the outside? You go up to the door and hanging on it is a sign that welcomes you into your cabin. What does it say? When you open the door, you see the center of a room. Is there a table? What's on it? Or is it an open space? You look at your camper's bunks. Are they made? What do they have around their bunks? Their suitcases, their clothes? Is there writing on the walls from campers gone by? Or are they painted? And your cabin has a nice clean look to it. You walk to your bunk. Does it have its own space? How is it decorated? What stuff did you bring? That place that you are in your head is gonna be your home for the summer. Let's talk about how you can make that dream a reality. Hello, Camp Pros. This is Oliver Gregan. My pronouns are he, him. I'm the executive director of YMCA Camp Winona in the Leon Springs, Florida. And my name is Matt Wilford. My pronouns are also he, him. And I'm the executive producer of podcasting at Go Camp Pro. And you are listening to First Class Counselors. This is a series for camp directors to give to their counselors as they hire and prepare them for the upcoming summer. Because great camp directors know this to be true, that when counselors are great, the kids' experience is great and kids want to come back to camp. Great counselors, great camp experience, kids come back. So thank you for tuning in to First Class Counselors. Here we're going to cover one specific topic and cover the essentials as fast as we can. It's the need to knows. They can't go without. The fundamentals. The basics. So let's get right into it. For nearly eight weeks, a small converted shed will be your place of residency. For many camps, a cabin is a room that is just bunks. Sometimes you may be lucky and you may have walls instead of screens or a tarp. Um, Other times you may be as pampered to have a bathroom in your cabin. (laughs) But how do you make this temporary residence for some that's only six to 10 weeks into a home? for you and for your campers. And for day camp counselors, you have the challenge of doing this, making it amazing without the physical four walls, screen or tarps. So how can you take all of the personalization, the rituals and the leverage that overnight counselors just get without even thinking, they get that from having the physical space. How do you do it as a day camp counselor? It's tough, but it's totally possible. This episode will have something for everyone. So let's figure out together how to help your campers feel at home while at camp. Yeah, so let's get started. And our first topic is going to be the comfort in discomfort, right? This identifying the reality of what cabin life is. Because to be honest, you're not in a five-star resort in most times. You are in a cabin, right? Some places are a little different. Like we said in the intro, you might be in a tarp tent. You might be in a tent camping all summer. You might be in a college dormitory setting where you have college dorms that your campers are staying in. There's a lot of different types of housing, but what is the, what are the things that you're going to do to make it work, right? My first point that I like to say is accept the reality of cabin life, where you're going to live and what the realities of those things are. So we know that the reality is if you're living in a cabin with 12 boys, it's going to feel crowded, okay? But that doesn't mean that we accept defeat in the unacceptable, okay? So for me, this means that we are not going to say, well, it's 12 boys, it's going to smell. We're just going to let it smell. If it's week three and we've had four, we've had 12 boys living in this cabin, we're allowing this to happen. No, take the time. Think about the things that you need to do as a cabin to make sure that your cabin doesn't become this accepted defeat of smell or an accepted defeat of dirtiness. Um, You know, some cabins you might walk into, there's a lot of small items all over the place. Maybe it's, uh, you know, it's socks. Maybe it's Nerf guns. Maybe it's um, hair care products, whatever it might be. Make sure that you are keeping your cabin area tidy or making sure that you are not just letting these accepted things of saying, well, boys will be boys or campers will be campers, or this is what a cabin is supposed to be like, take over what your cabin reality should be. So Mm -hmm. accept, um, don't have accepted defeats happening in your cabin. 
I no, like all, you? I like Oliver that you said accepted duff feet and you talked about smelly feet. I like that. I think there's I don't know whether you planned on that one, but that's that was good. Um, I'm going to change the show notes so it looks like I did. Duh, feet. Uh, so don't have accepted duh, feet. I love that. Uh, we'll get we'll get some first class counselor stickers made with that on it. Um, I, I think when I think about this topic, I think about my years as a counselor and how, you know, so I, I didn't stay in a cabin. I was an overnight camp counselor and I didn't stay in one cabin, right? So I had a, a traveling different cabin assignment for each week. And sometimes I wasn't even in a camper cabin if I was on maintenance that week or something like that. But the one thing that was important to me is that I had a space for myself, that I, I knew what I was putting up on the shelves. I knew where my bug spray was. I knew, you know, I kind of had that sense of normalcy. And it reminds me that for, for campers, we often use the phrase that summer camp is one week long. And uh, what, for whatever your camp looks like, you could say camp is one session long. Because for, for a lot of people, they don't go to a camp where a camper stays there for, for eight weeks. There are some camps out there. But for us, we had one week sessions. And that meant that a camper was waiting all year round to come for that one week. So we need to make sure that we're giving it our all for that one specific week. So the reason why we're doing a whole show on uh, cabin rituals and making a cabin feel like a home is because you have a short amount of time to make this foreign place feel like home for a kid. And it's not like, a, oh, we'll get it next week if we don't get it right. Or my cabin was a bit of a disaster, um, super smelly, it smelled like defeat uh, this, this week. No, you have to do it right because that camper might not be coming back to camp and this might be your only shot to have this cabin and by extension, the entire camp feel like home. So we have to treat that with that opportunity with a little bit of reverence. Um, so in everything we talk about today, this is an every week thing that you need to figure out how to do. And of all the things we're going to talk about, whether it's um, decorations or rituals or um, anything like that, you just have to find a way to make it work and make it sustainable. Again, we'll say this off the top. We're not expecting you to go buy a bunch of crap from the dollar store that's just going to end up in the landfill. Um, you know, what you do is more important than what is there and you can make magic happen on a shoestring, environmentally friendly budget. So uh, why don't we dig into what some of those things look like now, Oliver? Yeah, no, for sure. I love that you talk about every week is special, right? Because every single week you're taking a kid who's coming from a comfortable environment of being at home and you're putting them in a cabin where maybe they're returning and they've been to camp before and they know what to expect when they come to camp that it's going to feel like their second home, which is what a lot of camps talk about is this idea of camp being a home away from home. But also you are, for new campers, taking a environment that they've never been to and for one week trying to make that place that second home. So it's important to give that environment a place of belonging that everyone feels. And that's actually what our next topic is. There's a lot of different ways to make your environment feel belonging. I know we've talked about a lot of them on the show. Cabin contracts where your entire cabin works together. Um, a chore chart where everyone sees their name and how they contribute to the society of your cabin. Name tags on the bunks so as soon as they walk in. Camper profiles are a great thing. That's one of my points I want to make later. But I really want to say, like, make sure you take that time to have your campers introduce each other, shake each other's hands, you know, say, hi, my name is, and have that proper introduction period. Uh, I've heard and I've seen cabins where kids will leave at the end of the week and they don't know every kid in their cabin's name, right? There are 10 kids in the cabin. On day one, your kids should pretty much know everyone's name in the cabin, right? Uh, I like a few other things, like making sure your environment is set up for it. Um, the way bunks are set up in a cabin may not be always your choice, but making sure that it is an open environment where there is some type of a meeting space in the middle. If there's a table, that's great, but sometimes cabins are a little bit small, so you might use the bunks to make the circle. Um, if there's just a space on the floor, I've seen just a tape circle go on the floor and that way everyone knows they have a spot to sit on that circle. Uh, and then lastly, something that I really like to do when people arrive is to give a small gift of some sort. I know this seems weird, but you're gonna be hitting on that love language of people who accept gifts. And this can be a lot of different things. It can be like, a ro like rocks. I know you can order like a little pack of gemstones for like $10 on Amazon. You can get like cool rocks. 
Um, I've done stickers in the past. Um, Matt actually got on me because I was going to use this as my um, <laughs> eggle today, but I've already used it. So I know it's on a podcast in the past, but these stickers are great because um, they're like, you can go and look for it, but they're just Amazon uh, like laminate stickers that are like waterproof. It's $10 for 200 of them. And you can have those stickers and campers can pick them based off of what their personality type is. Like they can, they have something they can identify off the bat and kind of use to describe themselves. And then um, with that being said, you could also just write a little welcome letter. A, hi, welcome to the cabin. We're so happy that you're going to be a part of our group this summer. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Let's have a kick butt time at camp this summer, right? And that's just for them. It might be waiting on their bunk but you are already creating this environment of belonging if you're following through with, I mean, that was a long list. It's in the show notes to so go and look, but uh, those are little things that you can do so that as soon as a camper walks through that cabin door to a new environment, they know that that's an environment where people can belong and they can belong. So those are really a few of my points that I like to talk about, Matt. Um, what are some things that you do or you think you can do um, in creating an environment of belonging in a cabin with campers? Yeah, Oliver, you talking about love language like that totally resonated with me. I think you know how much I love love languages. Um, I think that's so incredibly smart. And and you can and for those of you who don't know Gary Chapman's love languages, right? Um, think you as I describe as I say them. Think about how you could make a tie in to your welcoming ritual. That yeah, that welcoming campers for the first time ritual. Physical touch, easy. High fives, giving gifts, easy. Write a letter. Uh, quality time, making sure you spend one-on-one -on -one time with that camper, that you're not just ushering them through the door. Um, active service, help them with their bags and words of affirmation, right? Just saying you are welcome here or saying hello and encouraging them that they're going to have a great week. All of those love languages, you can go bing, 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 and no matter what their love language is, you've got it. So I think that is absolutely brilliant, Oliver. Thank you for saying that. The other thing that I want to jump on that you said is doing intro introductions and things like that. I, I want to make sure that you don't just think of introductions as a day one thing introductions and community welcoming that is something that happens every single day including the last day because these campers have had their whole lives there's so many experiences and conversation topics and things that they can share with their cabin mates and you want to make sure you're doing whatever you can whether that's through um, intentional seating at meals groupings and finding the balance between letting them choose and you choosing to make sure they have the opportunity to get to know to get to know each other um, because I don't tend to be a very serious person uh, when I'm a, as a camp director, but you know, if a, a cabin left not knowing each other's names at the end of the week, that's a major red flag for me as a director. What is going on in that cabin? Not necessarily the counselor's fault, but what is going on in that cabin that did not allow for that kind of connection to happen between campers? That's wild to me, but there could be a reason. So I'd want to go and find out more. My point here is that the environment of belonging is... Um, it can be some of the physical things. I, I, I'm not going to say that it's completely um, not physical things, but what I know is that how we treat each other in a community is the most important thing. And that's as a counselor, as a director, I always try to get across this fact. I say, I said this too when I was directing the LIT program. I said on the first day to the LITs, and this is kind of also accepting our reality of living in a community together. I say you don't have to, you don't have to like each other all the time because sometimes you're not we're living together and it's going to be tough but you have to love each other or if, if you're not comfortable using the word love you can say but we have to respect each other and then we talk about what does that look like and not just about like yeah we're going to have fun and we're going to have the best week ever we're going to encourage each other no 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 but what about when we disagree or what about when we get competitive in a game of gagaball what does respecting and loving each other look like in that moment? Because I'm not going to like you if you just got me out in gagaball because I'm a super competitive person. But what does it look like for me to still love and respect you through those things? And you'll have to tailor that conversation to um, specific kids and to based on the age that it is. But I think that it's really important that we talk about and, and we are very firm on how we treat each other um, and that we're comfortable calling each other in and calling each other out when that doesn't go the way that we want, because um, 
you know, right from the start, it sets the tone of that we treat each other kindly with love and respect in this cabin. And that opens the door for campers who maybe are more introverted and can't lean on their extrovertedness to help them through social situations. So uh, yeah, don't have to like each other, but you have to love each other. I like that I you gave me this question that I know I'm going to give to all of my counselors when they have to do their cabin contracts. And it's asking their campers when they're writing that contract, what does our cabin look like when we don't like each other, right? Because they have to answer that idea of this idea of love and respect for each other if they want to continue this positive existence that they're going to have on camp, even if in that moment they don't like each other. So I love where you led me to on that, Matt, and I'm 100% going to take advantage of it coming into the summer. Uh, when we're moving on to our next topic, though, I want to talk a bit about what does it look like uh, when you say this is our home? So when you walk into that cabin, like we kind of intro this podcast, what do you see? What does it feel like when you're walking in there? So Matt, really, can you open this up and kind of paint that picture for me, what that welcoming is like visually for you in a cabin? For sure. So my my experience being a counselor was that the parents would come or the caregivers would come and drop the kids off at the actual cabin. So they would get to see what the cabin looks like. I know with COVID, that might be a little bit different or your camp does it differently. Um, but both you want to think about it from the parent and the camper perspective, too, because you want it to have that perfect balance of like professional and fun um, atmosphere, especially if parents are coming there, because we have to remember that parents are the ones that have agreed to sign their kids up for camp and give you their most important things. So we have to make sure the cabin looks good. It doesn't have to, be, like I said, it doesn't have to be streamers and, and dollar store crap everywhere. But the one thing that I'm always insistent on is that there is a welcome sign on the door. And on that welcome sign, you can design it however you want. Um, as long as it looks like you put some effort into it, you might not be the best artist or whatever, that's fine. But every cabin welcome sign needs to have every camper's name on it. And it needs to be spelled correctly um, and it needs to be with a little bit of heart put into it. And if you're not the best drawer, I know that some of the 16 year old sat staff that worked with me were not and I wasn't as a, as a 16 year old. So find a friend, get them to help you make your cabin sign and you can do something else for them in exchange. Um, but that was the most important thing that a camper, when you see the door or you see the wall when you walk in, that their name is there. And you might, some people might suggest to do like bunk tags where you pick the bunks for them. Um, some campers, I, I always struggle with that because, you know, some campers really don't like the top bunk or maybe really want the top bunk or whatever. So I, another um, idea with your um, welcome sign is that you could have their names in another place with pieces of tape and they get to take their name off the door so it stays in one place, but they also get to take their name off the door and they can put it on their bunk wherever they choose that they want to go as well. And then the, the super pro first class counselor move with a cabin sign is that you make it collaborative and you add to it as the week goes on. So maybe you have some sort of ritual, which we'll talk about coming up, um, where you recap your day and everyone gets to like draw a picture of their very favorite part of the day and it goes up on your door as part of your welcome sign. So that door is like a um, like a tapestry, like a family tapestry or a coat of arms to all the cool stuff that's going on in your cabin that week. So make a super cool, awesome welcome sign for your campers. Oliver, what's your tip on making it look like a home? Yeah, so my first tip is actually for you, the counselor. Um, it's not just about making that cabin comfortable for your campers, but we're talking a lot about that. On the flip side, I want to make sure the cabin is comfortable for you. Um, make sure you take the time to, like Matt said, you might move cabin to cabin, so you don't need to go too over the top on it, but make sure that your personal interests are shown in your bunk. You know, maybe it's a poster. I remember one counselor I had had a giant, like seven foot poster of his favorite baseball player. It was literally the first thing you see when you walk through the door and he was like, hey, look, you're going to come to this cabin. You don't need to be uh, an Astros fan, but you definitely need to respect how good they are. And it was just like a funny thing he did with his campers and he was charismatic um, and made it really work. But it was like, as soon as you walked in, you knew like, oh, cool. This is my counselor is about. Um, I have a way to connect with him. Um, he, he likes baseball. Even if I'm not that into baseball, I know something about him. And it lets campers learn something about you as a counselor that 
you know, the more they know about you, the more comfortable they become typically. Um, and that can be something else. Like it can be a giant D and D poster. It's just showing off your interest. Yeah. Um, put around your bunk photos, especially old camp photos, because then campers can ask you about those memories that you have had at camp. Right. So maybe it's friends that you went to camp with, or maybe it's, you know, last year, like a memory that you've had, but you, you have those old camp photos, put them up, put some photos up of like your family too. let campers know that you are a human. You have things maybe at home um, <clears throat> that you love and enjoy as well, but you're still able to come to camp and you're still able to have camp as part of your life. Uh, that's a great reality. Even if you have like awards and stuff, right. Have that little spot on your bunk look personal, um, almost like a little micro bedroom. Some things that I like to see in some of the cabins that I walked in before I've seen, uh, a great counselor uh, this past year, uh, I walked into her cabin and there was inspirational quotes hanging up on the walls and the ceiling and on bedposts. So as campers walked around, uh, you wouldn't probably find all of them in one day. You throughout the week would even find some like, oh, I didn't see that one that was by the light switch or I didn't see that one that was on Tiffany's bed, right? So it was great. I loved it. I like got to go in the cabin for a little bit and walked around and was like, oh, look at all these great quotes. Um, and she just literally wrote them on a piece of paper and taped them up. It was great. Um, and Matt hit on something that I thought was really important and I want to hit on. And that was this idea that that welcome sign would be collaborative and throughout the week you could add to it. Um, I uh, had a camper cabin once. They got a photo of their camper and they put it on the center of a sheet of paper. And then throughout the week, um, that paper hung on the end of their beds. And then the paper was decorated throughout the week by them and their cabin mates from the experiences that they had throughout the week. So like maybe when they came back to the cabin at night, they would write something on it uh, or draw a picture of an inside joke. So at the end of the session, the camper got to take that camper profile home with them of all the memories that they had from the session. But also it was just a great way to continue that cabin bonding and making that home more comfortable and existing throughout the week. So I th always thought that was a great um, idea that they ran. Um, and then the last one is I love lighting. If you put up twinkle lights or um, maybe you have a nice little lamp um, that you light up at like nine o'clock and you're like, this is the nine o'clock lamp. It's what keeps our lights on yeah. for us. The other lights go off. Um, it's a nice way to kind of build in that routine. And we'll talk about routines in a second. Matt, what about how you spend your time? Um, you have rituals down. I'm very interested because we just talked about the routine. We're about to talk about it. Yeah, I, I think that's great. Um, the, so we're going to move on to, to how you spend your time and why that is important to making it feel like a home, right? Because how you spend your time is what your reality is. And um, at camp, we talk a lot about being intentional about your time and what are you doing in those moments and to make, um, to make mornings and nights and rest hours, to make them intentional. And, and like I said before, every opportunity or every time that you have together is a time for campers to get to know each other either in a structured or an unstructured way and one of the ways that you can leverage time is that you can use the rituals that are already built into camp and add some program and programmatic elements to that and rituals and we know that rituals and routines are important for kids as well especially if they have trouble with transitions either psychologically or emotionally because they're missing home where where they have tons of routines right at home for some kids you know they know that when this time hits and it sees this on the clock they know to stop playing video games and to brush their teeth they have those rituals built in so you building those in as a camp counselor even just for a week will be really comforting for them so think about things like in the morning at night um, before you go to bed rest times meals what can we add to those moments so you know i think we've talked about this on other podcasts and we could do a whole another podcast about cool things to add to the different types of the day maybe that's a good topic i eh? all everybody go through the camp day and just like cool stuff to do during breakfast um cool stuff for camp days anyway um but my my the one thing that uh, no matter what age a camper is 
uh, that we can bring into our rituals is gratitude. And if we can share the things that we are grateful for, um, and whether you want to do that through grace at a meal, um, I really love doing it at the end of the day where kids can write some of their gratitudes. Maybe they have a gratitude journal, or maybe they have um, that, that little camper picture that you were talking about, Oliver. Maybe they could write on the thing that they were grateful for on Monday, and maybe that's a friend or you know, a camp experience or something like that. Um, because we get kids into the practice of gratitude and we know that is good for their mental health as well. Um, so you've got the ritual and the gratitude combining into one great, mushy, awesome feeling for campers. All right. Yeah, no, um, I love the comfort that comes from routines at camp. Like if you have that schedule, like it makes it so much easier on your campers. Even the kids who are like, I don't like schedules. I don't mm -hmm. like routine. Like I don't want to, right? Even they, if you watch them from the outside perspective, will follow those routines and they get comfortable in them and they and it lets them know. Now, I think that's so important. Now, when you get back into that cabin, right, whether it's at the end of the day, whether it's during your siesta time or maybe it's early in the morning, uh, it's important and imperative. I always say this, but that's not time off. Granted, there's that time for you to kind of relax, get to your bunk, get yourself situated. Um, but you need to make sure that you are being on during that time and being um, available for your campers. Um, some of the things that I like to talk about are have a box for your like, daily deeds, right? If someone did something really great that day, have a way for your campers to like write a positive note and put it in that box. And then maybe at the end of the day or maybe in the morning, you share it with everybody like, oh, yesterday we noticed that Kyle um, organized all the shoes on the porch, though it wasn't his chore for the day. Or, um, you know, maybe it's, I saw um, Michael out at volleyball. Um, he wasn't really into playing volleyball, but he was still willing to go and fetch the volleyball for everybody who was playing whenever it went out of bounds, right? Those are all great things. And it's just a nice little ritual for your cabin to have at the end of the day that lets them know that they all belong, that they're being noticed, and that it's not just you as a counselor, but their fellow cabin mates that are noticing. Um, and I always thought that was a great thing. Um, I also think you should write thank you cards to your campers, right? Be appreciative of them. You know, if they really behaved well or they, you know, went out of their comfort zone for that day or they um, stepped up in a big way to make somebody else feel comfortable, write a little thank you note and be like, hey, look, camp, um, I'm a camp counselor and my job is to make sure that you all have an amazing summer. But today you stepped up in a way that I um, wish that I could do the same. Um, you made sure that so-and-so felt more comfortable while you were down at swim time by being their buddy. And um, thank you so much for being a part of their day in such a positive way, right? Write that little thank you note, put it on their bunk for them. And when they get it, I've seen kids who just take that, they smile at their bunk and then they slip it under their pillow to hold or they put it in their suitcase because they don't want to lose it. Like it's such a, like a, a huge thing of satisfaction for them. Um, and that's something that you can do to spend your time wisely, maybe in the cabin to make sure campers are feeling like they're a part of something, but also like just play cards with them, just hang out, play a board yeah. game, do some, talk, answer lifelong questions that they're going to, like they're trying to answer. You don't even have to give them the answer. You can just be there to work through the problem with them. It, it makes it, it, you are a role model for them that they can connect with. Um, typically we know that, you know, it is so important for these kids to have a role model who is within 10 years of their age. And if they're hanging out with parents all the time or their teachers um, or just kids their own age, they're not getting someone who they look up to. And you are that person. That cabin time is huge for them. Now, the other thing that cabins really offer that makes it feel like a home is just like at home, you may have things that you do with your family that are things like family, family rituals you all do. Maybe it's pizza on Friday nights, whatever it might be. But there's things that you fall in line with. All right. And that, with that being said, Matt, do you have anything else you wanted to add? For sure. I, I love, Oliver, that you talked about um, getting kids to recognize each other. I think that is so important. And, and it reminded me of, of uh, just a simple daily practice, if we're talking about how you spend your time. Um, when we were traveling from point A to point B, I said, um, 
everyone together, no camper left behind or no, or no, no friend or no cabin three mate or no rabbit hutch mate left behind. Um, and, you know, getting kids to say like, Hey, do you see this person's jacket sitting on the ground? Can you grab it for them? But we all travel together and we are together. And just those little daily reinforcements that we want them to be together as a group, um, I think are really important for, for building that, um, you know, that camaraderie as a cabin. And again, every opportunity is a chance to get to know someone a little bit better. And I, I wanted to, to kind of add a, a little asterisk to Oliver and I are talking about routine, 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 and ritual, ritual, ritual. It's not that we're saying never do something surprising because we know that surprises are awesome. I, I would say you have to just find the balance, right? Because some things are sacred um, and a kid really, you know, some kid will really latch onto, okay, I know lunch is at this point and I know that this is what we're doing before bedtime. And so there's two ways you can approach it. Either you pick times of the day that aren't going to be touched. You know, kids need a rest. Don't try and over-program a big sports game during rest hour. Um, but there is an opportunity to mix it up in those other times or if you've identified that a camper really values that routine, like uh, giving them a daily schedule really works for them, um, just give them a heads up, just a little quiet heads up that something's going to happen and say, hey, we're, we're going to be a little bit later for bedtime than normal tonight, um, but don't worry, it's for a really great reason and we'll make sure you get enough sleep or whatever, just to help those campers, because I do know that more and more there are kids especially if they come from a home routine that is very rigorous, that the anticipation of, uh, or that the, the surprise of a, um, of something upsetting their routine could upset them a lot. So, so it's not that you shouldn't be spontaneous, just be careful with it. Yeah. And you can and definitely in the first night of camp, let them know that you are going to have things at camp that sometimes mess with the routine. Um, and then that way those kids know at the beginning of the week, like, okay, cool. So there is routine that I'm going to get to follow. And every once in a while, we're, we're going to divert from it, but I know that now. So I'm going to be okay with it. Um, so then we, we're going to walk down uh, this little line of cabin traditions, right? Because something that really makes a difference at camp is that you know that the things that you're doing now are something that people for the generations of camp have been doing since the beginning, right? And a lot of times that's connected to a cabin, right? Uh, maybe it's a, a, a song that they sing or something that it connects that cabin to their, to that ethos of what it means to be in Panther cabin. Right. Um, so one of the ones that I really love is we had a group called the bandits. They were the littlest kids at a camp I used to work at and they would put on face paint, but they would put on like a little bandit mask every single time. So whenever they were having like a big event, like it was Spirit Fest or something, you would always know the bandits, A, because they were the cutest, like eight, nine-year-old campers on camp, but also they all put on their little bandit masks for, uh, for the evening program. And it was just, just this tradition that was always there, and they know that they are officially bandits when they get to put on the mask. It's such a great thing. Um, but I've seen other cabins too, and it's something that like I try to bring to camps that I go to, so I like say like, hey, bear cabin, like you are, you should make your makeup the same. So everyone who like sees you knows that the bear is like two squiggly lines on the cheek and then three straight lines across the forehead. And that is the, that is the face paint of the bear. Um, th those are some traditions that I really think are just cool because it shows this pride of having the cabin um, spirit inside of them. The other one that I really want to mention with cabin traditions is have like some silly goofy ones too. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about saying thank yous in the last one, but like, you know, have like a bow tie, like a clip on bow tie for your cabin and give it to a camper at the end of the first day and be like, Hey, I just want to say thank you. You were like super awesome today. And like just having you in the cabin kind of made my day today. Like you made me laugh and all this kind of stuff. Here's a bow tie and here's the deal tomorrow. I want you to put the bow tie in someone else's bed um, something like in the next 24 hours and the bow tie can move to like six beds throughout this week, or it can move to like 12 beds. There's no like time limit on it, but, um, it's just that, you know, we know that whoever's where whoever's bunk has the bow tie on it is the gentleman's bunk. It's just that guy who's been, um, in our cabin being just a really cool dude. Um, hmm. and the, I, I like the bow tie of it because, you know, it's a gentleman, you know, you're looking good. Um, 
but and then it just becomes this thing where like oh yeah cool the um the eagle cabin has the bow tie of like the gentleman's cabin and right. then all of a sudden whenever whenever eagle walks around camp they're just defined gentlemen because they wear bow ties and they drink their uh bug juice with the pinky out and all this kind of stuff and it becomes this like tradition this this ethos or this um feeling that this cabin can give off or this personality type that you get to be when you're in that cabin granted sometimes it goes too far remember <laughs> to retract and you start to notice that your yeah. cabin starts to have a frat vibe you might want to pull back that's not a that's yeah. not a diss against frats there's just you know exactly what i say when i say it uh -huh. um but i think uh i think having that to your cabin sometimes is a great thing that campers look forward to they're like excited for the day that they become an eagle camper and get to uh, be a gentleman camper at camp so that's my kind of tradition thing that I like to talk about, Matt. What's something that you think are really important as traditions go? I, first of all, Oliver, I, I love, uh, the, the frat thing is just funny to me. We could do a whole podcast episode. I'm like, what to do if your cabin has turned into a frat? Because sometimes that, that just happens. Um, but on, on that, on that note too, you, it's an interesting role being a camp counselor because you have to uh, kind of be the tower of the line and you need to be into it. Whatever the campers are into, you have to be into as well, but you have to like carefully steer the ship away from frat house and towards awesome summer <laughs> camp cabin. Um, and that's, that's a tough thing to do sometimes because you just want to get into it as well. Um, and I would also say along that line that, um, letting camper kids are creative man they will find anything to rally around and, and if it's a thing for them let it be a thing for them it might not be as neat and you know metaphorical as the bow tie which i think is awesome but my uh my partner she talks still talks about how on their canoe trip uh, that they went on, I think when they were an LIT, that they carried around a watermelon that they had drawn a face on. And the whole trip was like preserving the watermelon from thing to thing. And I, I can't remember at this point if it, if it was the, the counselors that created that or if it was the campers that, but that, that screams like camper ingenuity to me, that they decided that this watermelon was their baby and they were going to carry it around through the muddy portages and you had to make sure the baby was clean and who was the baby staying with at night. And like, what an amazing thing for them to think about and you know as as 30 year old adults we still laugh at that thing that happened 14 years ago um right how how awesome is that so let the campers choose sometimes yeah i would i think if you're a leadership staff member and you're just listening to this and you're like oh man like i want moments like that i want that watermelon to happen like i don't know Get, go to the dining hall, be like, do you have an extra watermelon? Do you have an extra pineapple? Do you have like, do you have just something strange that like a bag of rice you don't care about? Like just something, Not don't be food waste, but then just take that, go up to a camper, like one of those 14, 15 year old, like kind of leadership teens who are like at the point where sometimes camp activities just aren't cool enough for them um, and hand them one of those things and just be like, I need you to take care of this and leave it at that. And if they're like, what do you mean? Just like, <laughs> I need you to take care of this. It's for the rest of this week, it's yours to take care of. I expect when I um, expect before you leave that this watermelon or whatever I gave you is going to be fine. Um, you can use your cabin for help, but at the end of the day, this is your responsibility now. And then just walk away. Um, sure, it may not work, <laughs> who knows? It may be really, really strange, but at the end of the day, like you're given a try and you may, you might get to see one of those great memories happen. It's a small power that you have as a camp director to just be like, I need you to take care of this kiwi for me. Yeah. I don't know yeah. why I'm sticking with fruit as a theme, but I feel like a fruit is a good way to go. I also have a great memory of a pineapple, which I know is like in one of our first podcasts of a pineapple hike I got to go on. I so remember that. And yeah, fruit can change camp. So <laughs> go after the good fruit. All right. With that being said, Matt, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, just, just that you can never underestimate the power of a cheer, a chant, or a secret handshake, right? Just those small little things where people are yelling um, or dancing or doing something secret that is just for them, um, you know, creating that is important. There's one very quick game. I don't know if I've done it as an eggle yet. 
I, I might have, but it's called the synchronized six count. Um, and very quickly, if for, you'll have to be watching on YouTube, I'm not going to be able to fully describe it. But basically, you teach campers um, that the right arm just goes up and down and you count to six. So one up, two down, three, four, five, six. And the left hand goes up for one, out to the left for two, down for three, up for four, out to the left for five, down for six, and then you put it together. So it, it, if you're watching on YouTube, it looks like this. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's called the synchronized six count. Um, and it's goofy. It's hard to learn. It's a skill they can learn. But then you get them to break into small groups. And as a small group, you make their own silly six count or whatever that is. Maybe you can do it based on their names. We talked about the name, the name wave game a couple episodes ago, I think. So you could use their name wave actions to create a six count for them. And then you make one as a cabin and there you go. But a boom, but a bang, you've got a cabin dance that you can throw up on TikTok and it'll be the latest thing. Um, so, but a cheer, a chant or a secret handshake is a great way to rally people around being goofy and being loud. Perfect. With that being said, that is the show today. That's everything that we had to share with you. But guess what? There's always secret stuff in the show notes for you to check out. But we do have one little thing that we always do at the end of the show, and that's our Eggle. So we're ever growing, ever learning. It's a trick, a tip, a game, or a song for counselors to use to be better every day. Uh, so Matt, what's your Eggle today? What are you trying to share with everybody so that they can become a better counselor? I don't think that I've done this one yet, but I'm not sure. Uh, but I think that it's important to remind people of because it's a ritual that I often forget, but you can do this to share with your campers. I talked about gratitude on this episode and it reminded me of gratitude journals. And sometimes if you just have a piece of paper that you write what you're grateful on, grateful for, there's no, that's not the most like mentally stimulating thing. So if I need some structure for it, or if I'm going to teach people to use a gratitude journal, I say, okay, five, three, one, five things that you're grateful for three things that you're proud of from today and one goal that you have for the next 24 hours. So five things you're grateful for from today, three things you're proud of that you did today and one goal for the next 24 hours. And that is just something that you can write on your own or you can give campers maybe five minutes to write in their journal and they can share one of those things. Um, but for you personally, it's just a, you know, a nice end of the night, um, some people like to do it in the morning, depending on what your, what your ritual, um, your morning ritual is like, but that's one that has served me well and has either helped me go to bed at the end of the night or set me up for success at the start of the day, depending on when I did it. So give a gratitude journal a try and, uh, let us know how it goes. Perfect. Um, yeah, I'm always a big fan of journaling, um, and always trying to start myself and always get about three to four days into it. Um, so maybe I'll try to keep this one. All right, for me, uh, going at it, my angle today is tea, the thing you drink. Um, it's one of my favorite things to start my day. I think it's just great, but I am going to urge, I'm going to start a tea revolution because I'm American and we do those kind of things. Right, tea especially with tea, that. yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm encouraging you to drink tea this summer, maybe put the coffee down, just so you know, for all y'all who need to get educated in the world of tea, um, there are probably thousands of variety of tea out there. Just go to a David's tea. You'll see there's just so many different options. But also, uh, if you're looking for a caffeine kick, you know, tea technically has more caffeine than coffee in it. So it'll keep you awake. But if you're also trying to go to sleep, um, it helps you do that. You get like a nice chamomile. Um, and on top of that, maybe uh, during the summer, um, you're not feeling the greatest or something like that, but there's plenty of teas out there that can help your immune system. They can help your digestive system. There's just so many good ways um, tea can help you where coffee is, is a one, one way helper. It's a one way street um, and you become super addicted to it. But then again, I'm talking about tea. So like I am, so I might be addicted <laughs> to tea, but um, I, I, I recommend it because of the health benefits, but also because um, it's utility that's right. You heard it. It's utility. There we oh, go. Okay. Getting a plan okay. in before it's over. And um, it's just great. So whether it's Twinnings or it's Bigelow or it's um, something else, go and grab some tea sponsored um, by tea this episode. <laughs> uh, with that being said, um, make sure you go take a look at our show notes. There's plenty of stuff in there for you to take and take a look. Uh, have a great time. But also, if you enjoyed today's episode, we'd love and we'd be so grateful if you left us a review wherever you're listening to podcasts. 
your ratings and reviews not only help us tell us what you like or don't like about the show, but it helps boost our rankings and helps more people discover what we do here, which is make better counselors for a greater experience at camp. And we at First Class Counselors are very grateful to be part of the Go Camp Pro Podcast Network. And if you would like to find a camp podcast for a camp director of every age and stage, so no matter how, as you grow from a first class counselor to a first time director, see what I did there, uh, you, there is a podcast for you on the network. So check out gocamp.pro slash podcast, and you can hear some amazing things uh, from the Camp Hacker podcast and uh, Camp Code, I know Oliver, you're listening to the Fundraising at Camp podcast to help you as a director set up for your year-end campaign and lots of other things. Um, and there are lots of equally, if not way more smart people than the two of us uh, out there in the camp world. So we are grateful to be a part of them. And I definitely encourage you to check it out. GoCamp.pro uh, slash podcast, and you'll find all the other shows there. Yeah. And thanks for listening, friends. Remember, camp is camp and camp's all good.